Hi everyone, this is Jen Grisanti and this is my story therapy interview with Carla Kettner. Carla is one of my guest speakers for my upcoming story therapy event, which actually starts at the time of this interview tomorrow, uh, February 15th. And the purpose for this interview is for you to get to know Carla. I know so many people with pitching get nervous. And I thought about doing these videos just so you guys can get to know uh, my guest speakers. Uh, so welcome, Carla. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. All right. So I am going to go into Carla's spectacular bio, which is mind-blowing with all this woman is doing. Uh, Carla Kedner was born in Calgary, Canada. After graduating USC, she moved to Australia and became a journalist and award-winning short story author. Kettner quickly transitioned into writing and producing Australian television and moved back to Los Angeles. Since then, she has written and produced hundreds of hours of television, primarily dramas. She was executive producer of The Blacklist, Bones, Vanished, Mob Doctor, and other credits include Zoo, Night Shift, Early Edition, Judging Amy, Do South, and Strong Medicine. Kettner has written pilots for Fox, ABC, NBC, and CBS. She is currently the showrunner of the Spectrum Originals, Roku Originals, Crimedy, love this word, Panhandle. Uh, and she has multiple projects in development with Sony, including projects at Apple, Netflix, and Freedom. She also has a musical piece, Mademoiselle's, with Paramount. She is passionate about encouraging diverse new voices through her company, Danger Doll Productions, and, and is working one-on-one -on -one with emerging writers. Uh, welcome, Carla. Thank you again for joining Great us. Here. Uh, I loved, and we talked about before this interview, we talked about your work with emerging writers and you mentioned that some projects have sold. So I would love for you to share with us about this. Okay, absolutely. Um, very excited. These projects are, are, uh, are, are up and running. Um, the three projects, uh, currently in development that I sold, um, with these uh, emerging writers. One of them is by a great young black writer named Corey Deshawn. Um, Corey, I met through my Read Black Writers uh, initiative. We had 60 scripts submitted on Twitter. Uh, his was the best. And, and I worked with Corey to develop a pitch, which we then sold to, uh, uh, sold to Netflix. Um, very, very exciting. Um, I'm also working with an actress turned writer, Jessica Renee Russell. Uh, we sold a project called Gamble Street to Apple, and Jessica's uh, at script stage now with that one, and it, it's going great. And the third is with a Korean-American playwright named Kim Lee Winslow. Uh, we sold her Korean sort of love story um, to Freeform. Uh, so it, it, it's very exciting to see these, these new writers blossom and, and learn how to navigate the minefield that is. Oh my God. What a gift to have you for, as a mentor. So you talked about Twitter. So do you often do something like this through Twitter? You know, I, I, the Read Black Writers Initiative was the only one I've done. It was very uh, labor intensive as you get, you know, reading 60 scripts. Um, but we had hoped to have time to do further initiatives um, because I'm in pre-production on my sh new show right now. That's probably not going to happen until potentially next summer or fall. Okay, great. And one other thing with your bio that I loved. So the word crimity, tell me about that. I love that. Well, I've always enjoyed, which you could probably tell from spending five years on Bones, I've always enjoyed the combination of real authentic drama and comedy. And, and the story engine of uh, procedural is, is 
just such a wonderful um, context to have fun with with drama and comedy. And uh, so the new show is a serialized primity um, where we're hoping the the surprises and the energy and the comedy uh, help to really make it compelling and, and watchable. Great. I'm excited for it. All right. So let's start with writing. If you were to think about an aha, aha moment for you in the writing process, when you think about journalism versus screenwriting and the idea of story, is there an aha moment where things just started to make sense for you? I'd say that my biggest aha moment um, was realizing that I needed to listen to notes, <laughs> which sounds like not about writing, but it turns out it's the most important component. Um, and particularly when I learned the magic phrase with which to respond to notes that freak you out initially, and that's, I hear you, let me think about that. And then after that, when you step away from the note session, really do think about that. Because if someone's giving notes, chances are even if the note isn't quite right or doesn't make sense to you, there's something going on in that area of your project that isn't landing. So I, I'd say that opening my heart to listen to notes rather than just digging in and saying, no, 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 no you don't understand, it's perfect, uh, was my biggest writing aha moment. I love that. I, I can tell you as a former current programming executive that the idea of giving notes is such a huge part of the process before it hits the screen. So that is a great message for all all of you writers out there, this is a huge part of the process. So if you were to think about an ingredient for pitching, you've sold so many pilots to so many places, what would you say is a secret ingredient that you find works well? To me, there's two secret ingredients that have really helped me. Uh, the first is emotionality. Let us understand the character's journey and why that's emotionally compelling. Um, the second thing uh, that's been really helpful for me in pitches is to build in surprises. Um, don't just tell us what the story is. Let the person you're pitching to be surprised and engaged um, because it's hard to sit and listen to a 20, 25 minute pitch. And if you can hook the, the listener in with emotionality and surprises, I think you have your best shot. Excellent. I love that. So, so true. With your background in journalism, which I can tell you I staffed many writers with the background of journalism, what would you say about your training in journalism helped you as a screenwriter? I think there's a couple things in, in uh, a couple things. One is research. Um, and, you know, I've worked on not, not just procedurals, but on shows, uh, um, that really have very little to do with reality. Even if that's true, there is always research that can inform your material and give it specificity and make people feel like, oh, they really know this world. Um, the, the other thing is that, that, that I feel like I learned from my fairly brief journalist days is logic. Um, so many writers, when breaking a story, get lost in the weeds because they don't just think logically about what would this character do next, feel next, what's the next step? So, so I think that, that that was a very helpful takeaway. 
I like how you mentioned logic here and the idea of emotionality and pitching because yeah. those are two key things yeah. with all of stories. So I love that. That's fantastic. Uh, staffing experience, since you have staffed on such a variety of shows, what is your favorite staffing experience and why? I'm going to say I'm going to reach into the way back and say that my favorite staffing experience was on uh, a show probably none of you have ever seen because it's pretty old called Early Edition, although CBS is rebooting it. Um, uh, and that was my favorite show because it was a very small staff for uh, three of the four years I was there. Uh, there was three of us writing all the scripts, breaking all the stories. Um, and it was just such a collegial, uh, envir supportive environment that we somehow managed to turn out 22 episodes of television with just three of us writing. Um, so that, uh, that, that was my favorite experience. Oh my gosh, that must have been tremendous learning with only three of you in yes. 22 episodes. Volume teaches a lot. That's why I tell new writers that uh, that you need to have minimum five scripts under your belt before you're ready for anybody to, to take you seriously. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, I love it. Now, any advice for new staff writers? Yes. Um, my advice for new staff writers is to like, I want them to participate, but, but really the role of a staff writer is kind of a training gig so most important to listen. And if you have, you don't need to participate in every conversation, in, in every uh, moment in the room, save yourself for those ideas that you know are great. Um, you know, less is more. The other thing I would say is don't pitch anything more than twice. Like, if you pitched once and it fell flat, possible people didn't hear it. So, okay, give it another go. But beyond that, the idea is dead and should not be brought up again. Uh, Let it go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think most important thing for staff writers is to take advantage of the experience, focus on what you can learn from that you know, th that group of upper level writers, because even a bad gig on a bad show, you can learn a ton. So, so I'd say, uh, get in wherever you can get in, however you can do it, and then listen and learn. Excellent. Love that. Uh, okay. For our last question, since again, you have such a bevy of experience, when you look at your experience of network, being on staff network-wise or selling network-wise versus streaming. Give us some insight into this. There's good and bad to both versions. The beauty to a writer of, of doing a broadcast network show is that the deadlines are finite. Uh, it, it's like working with uh, in sort of a, a Swiss <laughs> mode of being where the watches and clocks and time count for a lot. So that that pre I actually enjoy that pressure. Um, streaming the the de both the development um, well, primarily the development process goes much slower. Um, they don't have uh, the clock in front of them where we have to present to upfronts, we have to make decisions by, you know, January, we have to have a pilot by, you know, April, that's all out the window. Right. So, so um, it's a very different, more relaxed in a way process with streaming. That said, for, for newer writers, that can be difficult because that means the money you're getting is going to roll in slower. Um, um, I do like that, and I never had this in network, uh, Spectrum Originals allows me six bucks per episode. So <laughs> you, you get to be a little more liberal with your language. That's 
that's a, another oddball. That's a big thing. I love that. That's great. That's great. Uh, all right. I want to thank you so much for taking this time to share so much of your knowledge and your energy. You gave us so many nuggets of information that I think will help writers in a very big way. Thank you for all of the tremendous work that you are doing with writers. And I can't wait until you are on the Story Therapy event. Excellent. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Carla. Bye. Bye.